Dear students, today we will start some of the modules on traditional file structures and more specifically today we will be learning about sequential files. So why we want to study traditional file structures now? We were discussing about databases and we have discussed about database integrity and how data is stored and relational databases and object oriented databases. So why we are interested to read or study about traditional file structure because the database technology has evolved from traditional file structures. For example, the concept of indexing and hashing which was used and which has been used and which is being used by the file structures, traditional file structures is now a very important concept in databases. So what is a sequential file? A sequential file is a file that is accessed in a serial manner. So data is stored in a serial. So for example, first data is stored and then next and then next and then next. And when you're going to read that data, you need to come at the front and then read in a sequence. So what are its applications where such sequential files are used? So they have many applications like audio files, video files, file containing programs and files containing textual documents which have a sequence. So most of the files created by typical personal computer user are mainly sequential files. Excel file is stored as a sequence file at the backend. So let's have an example of a sequential files that how we can store. So for example, you want to store a employee record. And let's say you have many, many employees. For example, in this example, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we are interested to store eight employees. So how we will learn that uh, when we stored uh, the employee and the, in the employee, we, we are interested to store the employee name and its social security number. So how we will understand that the employee name has finished and then the social security number has started and then finished and then from here the next has started. So how we will take care of these, this sequence. So we will at the start try to identify that as in our example we are saying that we want to store name in 25 characters and identification number in six characters. So this means each of this box, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight boxes, each of this eight boxes has 31 character. So after every 31 character, we will understand that this is the end of first employee and the second employee has started and after 31 character, this employee has finished, the next employee has started and so on. So for example, we want to store the name like this. So we have seen that in this employee, we have saved Kimberley and Dawson as a name and there are some empty spaces for the employee. So we have 25 characters which we can store. So we are left blank with one, two, three, four, five, six. So this means 19 characters have been saved for this particular employee and these six characters are left. So we will not store anything in these characters except spaces and then we will start storing the identification number. So this means our employee will have maximum of 26 characters which can be stored until here and then the six character will be stored for the identification number. So database storage in the drives. So data should be stored as a sequence and in case of magnetic tape or CD, it's straightforward as they store data in a sequence. So it's very straightforward. However, in the case of magnetic disk storage, file would be scattered in different sectors and tracks and sector information is stored as a file in the disk directory system on the same disk. So you will say that first imply for example have been stored in one sector and then second imply in the next sector and so on. So you need to maintain such data into another file 
So that file would be kind of log file which contains all of the sequential information when data is going to be stored in magnetic disk storage. And when we will learn that the file has ended, in processing a sequential file is the need to detect when the end of the file is reached. Generally, we refer to the end of sequential file as the end of file or EOF in computer science as a file in the disk directory system on the same disk. So one way is to add a special record sentinel at the end of the file. So for example, when file is being written and at the end, you can add some sentinel like you can say that whenever this hash come, this means that this file has finished. Or you can add backslash zero, which is null character. So normally backslash zero is used to uh, denote that this file is ending. Another way is to place this information in the system directory file. So second way could be that you can put this information into the system directory file where you were maintaining that which kind of record is being saved in which sector and which track. So in that file you can store that this particular record is a lost record in this file and after that there is no further record and you normally when you want to retrieve this information from a file you normally use such a loop that while the end of file has not reached retrieve the next record from the file and process it and you know that this loop will be executed unless this condition is true and this condition will remain true until such a sentinel is reached or there is an information in the directory file which will tell you that this end of file has been achieved. So let's summarize today's module. We have learned about sequential files, traditional file structures, what are its application, how they are stored and what is end of file.